History in Motion is proudly brought to you by Midas Sport and its associate sponsors. This week, History in Motion is back in Valcom for the second part of our coverage from Round 5 of the Midas Historic Tour. The unexpected rain certainly caught the competitors off guard and made for some exciting racing. Let's keep the power on as we take a closer look at the Pakisa Freeway from the driver's seat. Right, we're on the straight going down, flat out, probably about 140, 150 k's an hour. Then it's very slippery, gear down, slow down, take it easy into the corner, probably about 80 k's an hour. Hold it through the corner, ease on the power gently, you have to take it easy, it's very slippery. Down the straight, into fourth gear, flat out, little kink to the right, be careful of the water. And we keep it down. Coming up to the left hander, little kink, and then it's a right, right hander down to third, 80 k's, 60 k's, and then straighten up and floor it. Keep it going. Be careful. There's a bit of a wet patch in the road. The car jerks to the side to just take it easy. Gear down, slow down, go around in third gear. Pick up the speed gently down into the straight, put it down, keep it at probably about 140, 150, slow down, turning left now, into a little kink, also very slippery here, up, and into fourth gear, flat out, a little bit of a water running across the track, just have to be a bit careful that you don't lose it, coming back down, towards the main straight at the back and into fourth gear a little bit of a kink coming up and all the way down to the fast two right hand corners but you just have to go in a little bit slower than normal with all the water around and we keep it down stay in fourth gear through the kink then the next one, and then there's a right hand corner coming up, down to third gear, take it easy, slow down, balance the car, and right, nearly up to the pits, cars through, not too much sideways, and here we go, to the straight, left, ease the power on, and that's it. With over 50 entries in the Marlborough Crane Hire Historic Saloons, the stage is set for some fantastic racing and the drivers are getting geared up to head out onto the wet track. Garage number one was occupied by a select few. All of us are ex welcome guys and people that grown up racing at this track. Myself, Diewald Nel, Johan Kutzer and Jakub Kureya. I was born in Welkom and I was present at the day that Goldfields track was opened. And when we were youngsters, we ride with bicycles 15 k's to come watch racing cars in that days. It's very special, this place. How was newcomer Hubi van Moltke feeling before his first race? I'm feeling quite uh, nervous, but very excited. I've had a little bit of training one day and none in the wet. So I really don't know what to expect, but um, just going to be calm and keep it on the line and try and get the car through. Feeling fairly confident. There's a pity about the weather today. It's treacherous compared to yesterday. 
We're going to try and keep it on the track, slow and easy, and uh, make the best of it. Let's take a look at the grid. Mike Schmidt will lead the field out on this wet track in his Ford Capri Piranha. Graham Nathan lines up second in his BMW CSL. The escorts of Meredith Willis, Werner Fonk and Dion von Furen occupy 5th to 7th, with Jackie Morrison and his escort rounding out the top 12. The lights go out and a massive stream of historic saloons flood over the start-finish line. The Ford Capri Piranha and the BMW CSL lead this impressive field as they head towards Turn 1. On board now with Mike Schmidt and the Ion camera really does give us a good idea of what the track conditions are like as we look back to Graham Nathan, who has Anton Raths in his blue Mazda hot on his heels. Through turn two they come and you can see just how much spray is getting thrown up as the drivers make their way round. <laughs> Looking back from the Ion of Graham Nathan and you can see Anton Raths is right behind him putting the pressure on. Raths moves right and lunges past Nathan. Looking back from Mike Schmidt, you see the pair side by side. Raths pulls a slight advantage and takes the inside line going into the boot. Brave racing in such tricky conditions. On board now with Wayne Lotter and we see Dave Leishon touching some of the paint which will be very slippery and this spins him right round and facing towards the oncoming field. On board the slow travelling Ford Capri of Dirk Fenter. Unfortunately it's travelling slowly because he didn't bring any wet weather tyres and only has slicks on. Hitting a puddle in the back of the BMW of Graham Nathan slides out. He accelerates through the slide and puts the power down to sail past Jenny van Royen in his yellow Sirocco. Dirk Fenter enters the pits and retires. It seems that the slicks didn't cut it today for the sweat track. Coming into turn one and it's Theo van Furen in his white BMW 2002 leading Werner Fonk's yellow escort. Fonk oversteers into the turn and slides the back around. Jaco Correa goes past but Fonk is travelling backwards along the track. On board now with Wayne Lotter and Marius Freve is having a look on the outside of Dievold now and it looks like Jimbo Bennett is recovering from his own off as well. Another car struggling in the slippery conditions is the green escort of Nikita Nell, and she's stuck at turn two. Side by side, Bennett and Morrison head into the boot. Bennett has the inside line and the advantage. He makes it count as they enter the turn and he pulls a slight gap. Tace Nell and his green escort is having a great day and he leads Rion de Roo in his prefect and Fanny Kloppers in his Merc round the boot. Coming up to lap them in his Frankie's Ford Capri is race leader Mike Schmidt. Schmidt puts the power down and his piranha glides past Grant Truter and you can see how wet the track still is. He goes past Fanny Kloppers and Rion de Roo. Going down the back straight and Wayne Lotter is passed by Steve Truter and his Ford Escort. Ahead of them, Truter lines up the escort of Jackie Morrison. Heading into turn nine and the trio of escorts make their way through. Pace Nell, Rion de Roo and Fanny Kloppers have the BMW CSL Graham Nathan bearing down on them. But before catching them, Nathan has Wesley Rautenbach to pass, which he does smoothly. Past Kloppers he goes, past de Roo, and Rautenbach is following the BMW through. Round the boot and the Datsun 100GX is pulling alongside the Ford Prefect. The red, white and blue Datsun GX Coupe of Marius Freve lead the Focus Freight Ford Escort of Dion van Furen, round turn three. Into the boot and van Furen takes the inside line and pulls up alongside Freve. Side by side they go round the bend. Van Furen takes the position and leads them into Castle Corner. And it's slideways to victory! Shark Mostert slides off the track, avoids the Armco barrier and gently kisses the tyre wall. He manages to get himself going again and rejoins the track alongside Graham Nathan. Into the Uncinis and Dave Lation leads a gaggle of cars. At the back, Werner Fork doesn't make the turn and goes straight on, up to the Oval. Not sure that Oval Racing is the answer to his traction woes. On board with Wayne Lotter and Jackie Morrison had got himself into all kinds of trouble ahead as he tank slaps his way wide and off the track, allowing Wayne Lotter past. 
Johan van der Volt has had a spin in his star mining supplies Mercedes-Benz and Colin Keane and Harry Lombard have had to pick their way past the unexpected car. Lombard in his blue beetle seizes the moment and manages to gain a position on Colin Keane as they race towards the boot. Powering his way past the Mercedes-Benz of Keane is second place driver Anton Raths in his Mazda R100. Out of the boot and into Castle Corner, he lines up the beetle of Lombard and makes the pass. However, it's Mike Schmidt who takes the chequered flag in the Frankie's Ford Capri Piranha. A great race from him, leading from pole to flag. Graham Nathan, aka Grumpy, in third place, makes his way around the final bend towards the chequered flag, with Yanni van Royen in his yellow VW Sirocco a few seconds behind him. Let's take a look at the results for the Marlborough Crane Hire Historic Saloons. Yanni van Royen came home in fourth and took Class D victory. Meredith Willis took Class E honors. Dion van Furen took the win in Class F and finished six tenths of a second behind Jimbo Bennett. Diervold now won Class G and Rion de Roo won Class H. Very slippery, very wet. I saw them both on my tail. So yeah, it was, it was, it was good. It was horrific. I tried to get past him, but I just couldn't. It was too slippery. And with my car being heavy, it's very difficult in the corners. It was a lot of fun. Scary. Very scary. I tried to overtake him at a stage, and then I noticed that he's not going to last too long, so I backed off and stayed behind him as long as I could. Harry got me in the corner there when we got into a little bit of a mall with a couple of other cars, and we managed to both get through cleanly and he got ahead of me. I took an opportunity earlier in the long bend at the back and uh, he got me back. When opportunity knocks, you've got to take it. Fortunately, at this stage, it was a win-win situation for me. Uh, we had a good scrap, but the rain made it a little bit hairy. But uh, like I say, luck always helps. Race two gets underway on a noticeably drier track for the Marlboro Crane Hire Historic Saloons, although quite a bit of standing water remains. 43 cars take the start light and will accelerate their way round turn one and into the race. The drier conditions will certainly instill a greater sense of confidence in the drivers, and I'm sure we will see some more daring moves than in the wet. Into turn two, and Graham Nathan has already passed Anton Roths, and he will be doing his best to hang on to the piranha of Mike Schmidt, but that's a tall order. Further down the field, there are already some great battles developing, as we see Marius Favey, Jimbo Bennett, Steve Truter, Quinton Wellers, Johan Kutzer and Jackie Morrison jostling for position. Anton Ross has a look down the inside of Graham Nathan around on CD1, and there's contact! There doesn't seem to be much damage done as Nathan accelerates towards the back straight. Let's have a closer look there from the iron on board of Nathan. Wow! Quite a bit of bumping there, but nothing too damaging, although Ross does lose quite a bit of pace. Into turn nine and Sophos Pantazis in his red and black Datsun 240Z leads the big Mercedes of Colin Keane. You can really see how the Merc leans to the left on this predominantly right-hand track. Keane has a look down the inside of Pantazis, but storming up behind them are Dave Lation and Wesley Rautenbach. Rautenbach takes the inside line and this forces Lation wide and he loses the back end. Jörg Fenter seizes his moment and makes up a place. He will be wanting to make up as many places as possible after his DNF in race one. On board with Jakob Kreinau. He makes his move on Fanny Kloppers, heading into turn two. Something sounds a bit off with his Alpha as he heads into turn three, struggling to find a gear. Eventually, he finds one and gets the power down. Klopper and Daru are right on his bumper, though, as they head into the boot. He is going to have to work hard to keep ahead of them. His gearbox was solved for now. He is back on the power. The battle for third place is really heating up as Van Royen and Raths run side by side around Giel's Corp. The yellow Sirocco Van Royen takes the advantage heading into the final turn. Great racing between this duo. Jackie Morrison is pushing hard to catch Dion van Furen, perhaps a little too hard as he runs wide at Heelskorp. 
He keeps it under control and doesn't lose a position. Just some time to find Furin, who will take the chance to catch his breath after being so closely pursued. Harry Lombard and Willem Fonk are side by side with a hard chasing Theo van Furen on their bumpers. There really is nothing in it as they head towards Giels Corp. Fonk takes the position out of Giels Corp into the final turn and the BMW of van Furen keeps the pedal flat and takes the position from Fonk onto the start finish straight. Datsun, Escort, Datsun! The battle continues with Quinton Willis' Escort trapped between the Datsuns of Marius Reve and Sophos Pantazis. Not for much longer though as Pantazis moves to the right and finds a way past Quinton Willis, taking the inside line into the corner. Next up, Marius Reve. Clive Dentrum has a narrow advantage of Werner Funk as they run nose to tail into the final corner and onto the start finish straight. Close, clean racing which is always good to see. Dirk Venter seems to be having a better run in this race and is working his way up the order as he passes Marius Reve and Jakob Correa. Awesome angle from the Ion camera looking back on the pair. We see Wesley Rautenbach in his Datsun pass Quinton Willis as he works his way up the order. Into the final turn and Rautenbach passes for Ve as well. Peter Boyson in the red and white Mercedes and Hubi van Moltke with a checkered bonnet are having their first outing today and it's great to have them in the series. On board with Kirsten Fenter, who is in hot pursuit of the pair of newcomers. Jackie Morrison and Johan Kutzer leads the cars into turn one. They're a lap ahead of the trailing gaggle. Mike Schmidt in the Frankie Soft Drinks Ford Capri Piranha rounds the final corner to take his second victory of the day. A fantastic result for him, but I'm sure he'll be missing Willy Hepburn, with whom he usually has a great tussle. Coming through in second place is Graham Nathan in his K80 Estates BMW CSL, 4.7 seconds behind Schmidt. The battle for third place did not let up, and coming round the final corner, it's Yanni van Royen who is ahead of Anton Raths, another close Ford battle. With Tace now leading Marco Fave and Johan Prince to the checkered flag. Clive Dentrum and Werner Fonk are still inches apart as they take it to the flag. Dentrum has the edge though and he takes 5th place, 0.3 of a second ahead of Fonk. Fantastic battle between these two. Rian Deru and Fani Kloppers are side by side as they enter the final corner. It's anyone's guess who will emerge the victor in their battle as they drag Racer to the line. It's Fani Kloppers who edges out Deru by less than 2 tenths of a second. This race really has produced some fantastic racing as we see Stephen Colotti and Quinton Willis pushing hard to the line. With Hubi von Moltke just in front of Willis, this gives Colotti a slight advantage and he edges Willis out by just over one tenth of a second. Confirmation of the results then and Mike Schmidt took a double victory for the day. Gunny van Royen did the same in Class D and Meredith Willis took the double in Class E. Dion van Furen won Class F, a double for Diervold Null in Class G and Nikita Nell won Class H. It was a fantastic day, two completely different races. As you know, the first race was run in a pouring rain, and yesterday we practiced in the dry, so that was new for us. I haven't driven my Capri in the wet, and I really enjoyed it. The second heat was dry, and uh, again, it was hard work. I see how Grumpy made me work for it. He was in my mirrors the whole time, yeah. So I just want a big shout out to Willie Hepburn. Get those ribs sorted, Willie. We came here to get a surprise in the free state, and it was showering all day. The motor car on semi slicks is really heavy in the water, so we slipped and slid and carried on all day. But it dried up now. I had a great last race. The car really performed like I like I wanted it to. It just proves that all the you know when you when you do a whole bunch of graft on it and it works. It's so satisfying. It's really good fun. I had a great race with Anton. Him and I touched ever so slightly, but. Uh, we carried on with the game. Well, I'm going to have to pull my finger out quite a bit to catch Mark, but uh, he mustn't relax because I'm trying really hard. It was an awesome, awesome race compared to the first start. Very dry. Started off uh, in the first two, three corners, lost some of the slow guys because I was a little bit back. And then from there on in, it was just uh, wheeling Mr. Benjamin. That was great. We, uh, we came up from behind and I uh, tried my best and I managed to keep him behind me. And in the corners, he's a bit quicker because he's got slicks on it. 
and uh, in the straights I think I had a little bit more power so I'd pull out from him and he'll come to the corner he'll close up again so it was, a, it was a matter of being uh, tactical and making sure I was in the right place at the right time to make sure he couldn't get past me. Coming up after the break on History in Motion we have slips and slides from the Sabella Marcars.